Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today's Friday reminder is going to be very different than we usually do it in the previous weeks. As this week, um, we're not really doing a reminder, but more likely a reflection. Last week we spoke uh, extensively about pr police brutality and racism. And this has been a topic which we've often repeated many times in, 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 a, in, a, you could say in the last couple of months. We've released many videos about the topic of racism. Um, and in our discussions, we mainly focused on racism as it relates to the Muslim community. We didn't really touch upon um, racism in the wider community, in the human, human community, you could say, because it was, because obviously our target audience are the Muslimim. However, during this issue, or as a result of this issue of George Floyd, it has exploded globally as a, a, a more wider issue. And uh, ironically, um, some of the things, the, the deep-rooted issues that are existent in our current community has actually manifested itself uh, in various ways. So I wanted to just try to address some of the topics that were brought up in people's comments online and in discussions that happened on forums. And just give a, a, you could say, bring into line what we've said, what we've spoken about before, uh, into our current situation. So the manner in which I want to deal with this, this, this reminder is to title, you could say, each section on statements people have said. The first one being, this is purely an American issue. Now, this one is an interesting one. Um, I have heard people say, even to me directly, that this issue... Black Lives Matter and what happened to George Floyd is purely an issue which affects Americans. It doesn't affect anyone outside of the United States. Or it's not something which we should bother, bother about outside the United States. Now, clearly, this individual uh, is either blind, or as you say in Arabic, is either he is ignorant or he's feigning ignorance. Um, racism has been around from the time of Adam, alayhi salam. The first one being Iblis, saying, I am better than him. He is made from clay. I am made from fire. Now, um, the joke is, Iblis was criticized for what he said, although he actually had some level of validity, validity in what I'm saying. What I mean by that is, Iblis was actually different than Adam. Adam was made from clay and he was made from fire. So there actually was a difference between the two of them, hence why he thought one was better than the other. Whereas we have no excuse because we are literally the same. We are all made from clay and we are all the children of Adam. So we actually have less claim to that racism than Iblis. So you are worse even. A racist, I would, I would suggest, is worse than Iblis. So the, say, the fact that this is only an American thing, again, is ignorance. Also, we find that, that the basis of Judaism even uh, is racism because it is the belief of the chosen people, those who are by birth, by birthright, better than others, because they will go to paradise and others will go to uh, well, will not. Again, the seed of racism is already there. The belief that you are better, and Allah said, if you truly believe that that, that there is some kind of covenant that you have between between you, the children of Israel, and Allah, then wish for death. Allah Allah um, rebukes them and highlights the fallacy of their of their racist belief. Also, we find the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi his last and final speech, major speech to the Muslimin, he chose the most important top subjects to cover in that speech, and of those topics was the topic of racism by highlighting there's no virtue of the red over the black, or the black over the red, over the Arab over non-Arab, or the Arab over non-Arab, except with taqwa, so righteousness. So he established the, the foundation of virtue, via merit, as in a meritocracy, that a person, when you say one person is better than the other due to what they have done, not due to their heritage or their genetic makeup. So already we find the Messenger of Allah thought it was, not, thought it was important to address in the final khutbah and made active e uh, efforts to stamp it out. So again, to say that it's only an American thing is a fallacy. And also, um, I would suggest that anyone who, who makes such a statement um, is I, I, can, I, can, I can only think of it as being a liar, or a liar and a fraud As they want to detract from the reality That maybe in themselves they have in, innate racism And we'll talk, touch upon that, what I mean by that a bit later on Another point that was mentioned Is that this is a purely a non-Muslim issue Muslims, we don't have these issues This is only a non-Muslim issue Now, yes, 
non-Muslims would more likely have the belief, as in a genuine belief, that they, or one segment of them, are better than the others. By virtue of their birth or their physical characteristics, they may like it to believe that we're as a Muslim, more, could, may, would, would find it more difficult to manifest that aqidah and belief because we have the Islamic text and throughout Islam, the Quran and the Sunnah, it says the complete opposite. So for a Muslim to come out and say, these people are fundamentally better than those people by virtue of them being people, not virtue of their actions, by the way, because we do agree that a person will be better than that person based on righteousness. And this person does good and what does not good. This person just gives charity, a person is a thief. We, we get that this person who is, is righteous is better than those who are sinful. But to, you find it difficult to believe or to have a Muslim who would fundamentally say that this person is better than that person and believe that Islamically. If he believes it in himself, then he's been ignorant and we, we, it, is what, it is what it is. But it was more difficult for a Muslim to believe so, as opposed to, for example, in a Christian church where they had religious edicts, we had religious rulings stipulating that those people are savages and you can do so. So on that regards, yes. But again, it's a fallacy. A Muslim is a human being. And any human being can exhibit and manifest racist beliefs and behavior. If, but the only thing is that I would say that a Muslim is worse because they actually have a religion that tells them point blank, racism doesn't exist. Oh, I mean, racism is wrong and you shouldn't be racist. It's not, a, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist as a valid belief system. But yet they still continue. You can almost say that a non-Muslim in a way has an excuse. As in, that's all they know. Nonsense. They have no guidance from Allah. You have guidance, but yet you still choose to believe those things. So in one ways, in some ways, a Muslim who is racist is worse than a non-Muslim who is racist. So to say that it's purely a non-Muslim issue, again, uh, is nonsense. Muslims are not immune from racism. Racism stems from a simple seed. A simple seed. And that seed is that it's possible or that a person can and is good or bad based on what they are, not who they are. Again, a person will be fundamentally good or bad based on what they are rather than who they are. Who they are as in what their actions do, what actions do, what they believe, what they say, as opposed to what they are as in how, what family they're born into, what passport they have and what language they speak. This, 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 this is, you could say, the seed of racism and anyone can have that uh, evil seed. And again, we see the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had amongst them issues of racism. That the Messenger of Allah himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and other companions fought hard to fight against and to, and to, fight and to uh, relinquish and to, to, to remove from the Ummah. So if they had an issue back then that they fought against, then no doubt we will still have these issues today that we fight against. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that well, this is one of the things that will never lead this Ummah. Fakhr bin Ansab. Show enough from your lineage, saying that I am better than so and so. Um, another one, which I've seen many, 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 many places, and I think it's very, very important to touch upon the statement all lives matter. Now, there's a statement in Islam, we, people say all the time, Kalima tu haqqin uridi bihal batil. A statement of truth that is intended by falsehood. What I mean by that? What state, how is this statement true? All lives matter. Of course it do. Of course all lives matter. Allah himself said, whoever kills, man qatala nafsan bighayri nafsin, or fasad fil ard, whoever calls, kills a nafs, whoever takes the life of a person or causes corruption, it's as if they've killed the whole of mankind. So Allah has already established in the Quran, the death of any individual, nafs, since a Muslim, he said nafs, an individual, a person. It is, it's as if they've killed the whole of mankind. So yes, all lives do matter. Islam came to establish and preserve life. Not to preserve Muslim lives, but to preserve life. So yes, all lives do matter. But that's not the intent by that statement. All lives matter. Now, this is said as a reply to the statement, black lives matter. 
So the person who says all lives matter is either one, again, one or two things. Either they don't understand the meaning of the black lives matter, or they are, again, feigning ignorance. Uh, they're trying to but act as if they don't know what it means, or they know what it means, and they're trying to, to in a way, diminish its message. What, is it, what, does it, what does it mean to say black lives matter? It literally means that we live in a society whereby not every life is equal. Not every life is treated, treated the same. And at the bottom of the pile, the bottom of the barrel, are black lives, or the lives of people of African descent. So the statement is actually saying, no, black lives matter as much as any other life. So to say all lives matter is, is a completely ignorant statement. Of course all lives matter. And that's the purpose of the statement, black lives matter. I.e., Black lives matter as much as any other life. So treat every life equally. Um, it is an indirect way of saying Actually, the black lives don't matter as much, or whatever the case may be. But it's hard to understand why, they are, why this statement is, is, is mentioned, unless they've understood by the statement, black lives matter, that other lives do not matter. And I don't think any single person who, who, who is rallying and calling for equality, racial equality, is saying that black lives matter more than anybody else. Nobody's saying that. They're saying that everyone's life is equal, especially those who are deemed to not be that important. Um, another issue which came up or comes up, George Floyd had a criminal record uh, and should and we should not support criminals. Now this is an interesting one um, because George Floyd, the police were called because apparently he, he tried to spend a counterfeit $20, which apparently turned out not to be counterfeit. So in terms of the reason why the police were called, there was no crime committed. And in terms of when he was subdued, arrested and subdued, it was for no crime he had committed. So mentioning previous crimes is pointless, unless you are indirectly suggesting that he somehow deserved that. Now, yes, George Floyd had a criminal record and he was incarcerated and he was uh, uh, convicted for those crimes and spent time in jail. So he actually spent time for his crimes five years prior to this event today. So unless you are suggesting that whatever time he spent was not good enough, and the fact that he committed a crime in the past means that he's in, is, in, is, is, is always deserving of that, and that he died deserving what he has, I can't see a, a reason why mentioning his previous crimes is irrelevant. Now I understand if a person, for example, was, burglar, was in someone's house burglar, bur uh, stealing wealth, it's burglar, doing, uh, being a, doing a burglary. And, there's a, and, and, and the, the owner of the home woke up and saw him in the house and he has a struggle and he got killed. I can understand where people say, well, what's he doing in his house? I mean, he died in the cause of committing a crime. Fair enough. But here we have a case of someone who clearly was not resisting arrest, was only asking to, 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 to be able to breathe normally, but yet he was, was refused. So again, another tactic as you can see, there's a pattern here. Another tactic to distract from the reality of the severity of this crime. And what's quite sad is that it kind of almost indicates what people are, 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 are protesting for. They're protesting for equal treatment for all. Everyone who is innocent. And as much as George Floyd had a criminal record, in this particular instance, he was innocent. So it's irrelevant what he did in the past. What's relevant is right now, did he commit a crime? No. Did he deserve to die? No. So why mention his criminal record? No one has taken him to be a Nabi. No one is quoting him as saying, as a righteous person, we should follow his example. No one's mentioned any of that. They're just saying the police stood on his back, on his neck, for eight minutes until he died. This is wrong. End of argument. And we are, suggest and we are pointing out that there is an inherent structural uh, discrimination within their system of America, and I'm sure it's in other systems, that needs to stop. If, if anyone has a problem with that message, then leave a comment in the message below and say, yeah, fair enough. I disagree, it's fair enough. But I don't see why anyone would do so. And we find that the message of Allah, Allah even before Islam, rallied for the innocent. It was called Hilf al which we will come on and discuss uh, in a minute. 
Um, another issue we mentioned, which is he was not Muslim, and we should support Muslim, not to kuffar. And this is why I want to mention that we have Hilf al Fadul, the Messenger of Allah, Allah Sallam, came together with kuffar before they became messenger and made a pact, an agreement to help the innocent. That was an agreement from the Messenger of Allah. Sallam, Sallam. And when he was in the B, he said he supported that, 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 that act. Although before he was a prophet, he said in prophethood that he supported that. Very act, and we understand from this that it's permissible and encouraged for Muslims to work with the kuffar for a common good. So, if we want to stamp out evil and oppression, and the kuffar also want to do the same, we can come together and say, "Yeah, we agree that this is evil," and this is a clear example of stamping out evil. A person died for no valid reason, and we Muslims need to support the fact that this is wrong. This is injustice. There is no need to mention whether he's Muslim or not Muslim because Islam doesn't look whether you're Muslim or not Muslim when it comes to oppression. Even Allah has said, and the, the, the Messenger of Allah has said that there's, between, there's, there's no hijab, between, there's no barrier between Allah and the da'wah, the dua of the oppressed, even if they're not Muslim. Allah will answer the dua of a non-Muslim who makes dua against a Muslim if, they are, if the Muslim is oppressing them. So what, what, why, not, why not if a non-Muslim is oppressing another Muslim? So this is another uh, fallacy. Um, that, that many Muslims fall into, unfortunately, where they think that Islam is only, that, that, that justice is only a monopoly for the Muslims? Not at all. A Muslim from their religion, if they see a kafir being oppressed in the street, is upon them to stop it. It's upon them to stop it. And it brings us to the next one. This was one of the most interesting ones. The siwak and using the siwak for my wudu is more important than black lives or black lives matter. And the reading of the Quran is more important than a Black Lives Matter. Billahi or Tallahi. When I'm doing wudu and, and I rub over my sock and I put my, the water over my sock, Wallahi al Adim, that's more important in my life than this man that got killed yesterday. Wallahi Billahi Tallahi. Use how, the fact that the miswak is the sunnah. Wallahi, the miswak is more important than all of Black Lives Matter com combined. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect you. Well, like affect the, 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 the issue, the intricate issues about how to make dua and the tajweed of the Quran is 10 times more important than Black Lives Matter. 100%. Injustice and oppression is all over the world. It doesn't mean you have to stop your whole life and stop your whole well, life. Well, how, how many dates you should eat in the morning? How many timr is sunnah to eat? Three dates, one date. How many dates you should eat in the morning is more important than Black Lives Matter. What is this? This, is the dean, this is the dean of Islam. We don't Again, more red herrings, more distractions, and a more subtle, or we could say blatant, demonstration of inherent racism. Tawheed, the worship of Allah, is more important than the siwak. Worshiping Allah and stamping out shirk is more important than the reward you get from walking to the masjid. But it doesn't detract from the importance of the siwak and walking to the masjid. Nor did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi say, ignore every other virtue, ignore every other vice, just focus on Tawheed. It's, it's useless, it's a pointless statement. Nobody is saying Black Lives Matter is more important than the worship of Allah alone. Nobody is suggesting that Black Lives Matter or that, 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 that stamping out racism is more important than stamping out shirk. But, doesn't, that, but that doesn't detract from the fact that we as Muslims, and I guess also non-Muslims, need to actively stamp out racism. So it's a pointless statement to make. And again, it just demonstrates that the ones who say these things inherently are complacent in racist behavior. So when they'll see racism, they will say, well, Tawheed is more important. Or they find some kind of cognitive, cognitive dissonance or some kind of excuse to justify their action or, or in this case, inaction. Which brings us to the second statement, which I've, another statement which I've heard. This is not an important issue. We have more important issues to deal with, like Palestine and, and the Uyghurs in, in China. Again, who denied the, the plight of the Palestinians? Who said that the Uyghurs are not being oppressed in China? They are separate issues. We deal with that and we deal with this. If Muslims or Islam does not say we have one right, we need to, one wrong we need to correct and everything else is not important. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, was marching towards Ta'if 
they're going to establish Tawheed and Ta'if. But whilst on the way he was still stamping out Shirk and Kufr, that was manifesting itself from, from the newly uh, embraced Muslims in Islam. It's, you can't, it's, not, it's not an issue where you have to do this or that. You can do this and you can do that. But what's actually interesting is that the plight of the Palestinians and the plight of the Uyghurs is the same seed as, as the issue we're dealing with right, right now. The Chinese are oppressing the Uyghurs because they fundamentally believe that they are less, that they have the right to oppress these people. The Jews in Palestine are oppressing the Pal uh, sorry, in Israel are oppressing the Palestinians for the same reason because they believe the Palestinians are less than they are. It is the same plight. So whoever wants to separate and say, well, this is the issue, that's one issue we have to deal with, not that issue, are being plainly ignorant. And if you think that you can stamp out one, not the other, therefore what you're saying is you're actually supporting the oppression. You're effectively saying that the Palestinians are more e are equal to the, to, to to the to the Jews in or, or or to the Jews in in Israel, but other humans are not so equal or not as important. No. Islam establishes that there is no virtue of one person or another person based on what they are, on who they are. And that oppression needs to be stamped out regardless of where it is. Another one. It doesn't matter or it doesn't affect me. I'm not black. Again, a demonstration of the ignorance of the issue, of the situation. Do you believe that a person who hates a black man doesn't hate you also, or doesn't have the capacity to hate you also? And do you believe that this mindset where one person, one human is less than another person, cannot affect you at any one, at any one time? All it takes is for a mindset to change. Maybe one day the, the hatred will be, will be towards blue-eyed people or long-haired people or straight-haired people or this person with that passport or this person with that passport. It's the same nonsense. Unless you stamp out racism at its core, we will always have the same issue. Where the, at the moment, we, the, 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 one, the main victims are black people in this society we live in today. It's only, only by virtue of circumstance that maybe you are not receiving this situation right now, but there may come a time when you will do. When they're finished with, with those people, they'll turn upon you. And we see this even in the UK. When the Eastern Europeans were coming in, the same narrative. All these Eastern Europeans, these Polish people coming in, it's the same narrative. And they have the same skin colour even. So unless you stamp out racism at its core and stand up for it, then you will always have this sickness. I'm not racist, so there's nothing more for me to do. And this is, I'll say, one of the most interesting thing that most Muslims need to focus on. It's not enough to say I'm not racist. You need to be anti-racist. It was not the case where the Messenger of Allah, Allah saw evil around him in terms of racism and he said to himself, as long as I am not Muslim, I am not, not racist or Abu Bakr is not racist, then we're cool. No. And that is actually contrary to Islam. Islam says whoever amongst you sees evil, they must stamp it out with their hands. And if they can't, they must stamp it out with their tongue. And if they can't, they must hate it. And that's the lowest of faith of Iman. You must actively stop racism. If you see people speaking in a narrative of racism, we must say, no, stop this. It's not correct. These people, oh, look at this person. This is this black guy, this one. Look at this Polish person. Look at this Gala. Look at this Gore. Look at this so-and-so. Look at this, this uh, Gringo. All this language is the same language, it's the same seed. If you hear it, if you see it, we must stop it. And it's not enough to stamp out. We have so much more we can discuss um, about this. Um, and one more issue I would last want to discuss is protesting is haram, akhi, and rioting is haram. Nobody is calling for that. Not a single person is saying, let's go out and start rioting and start stealing. And in the issue of protesting, there are some ulama who say that if the government allows peaceful protesting as a means to voice your, your opinions, then it is permissible on that regards. If that's the opinion you hold, that's up to you. I'm not promoting that opinion. I'm saying it is out there. But as no one is saying you must go out and riot, everyone, even the protesters are saying stop rioting. Theft is wrong. Destruction is wrong. So it's, again, it's just another mechanism of distracting or detracting from the point at hand. And the point at hand is, racism needs to be stopped. We must all actively stop racism and more stand up for injustice. So my final closing statements are, 
to the Imams, the Du'at and religious leaders. We must actively stamp out racism in our communities. And I'm saying this to the Muslimin. Also to the non-Muslims, they need to stop it, stamp it out in their communities. But for us particularly, we need to do so because with racism, one of the main reasons why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to stamp out racism is because of the effect it has on the community. It destroys communities. It breaks up the Ummah. And whoever doesn't see that is blind. There is no way that Muslims are going to get victory only for the Gujaratis, only for the Arab, only for the Saudis. There's no such reality where that works. Victory only comes for the Muslimin as a whole, as a unified Ummah, not just for a small segment of society. So if you do not actively stamp out racism, both in practice and in speech and in action, then you're basically saying at some point, I'm going to actively take part by inaction in the destruction of my own community. And we need to stamp out this as much as possible, especially as it is a manifestation of a naqs, a deficiency in your iman and your tawheed. Because effectively you're saying, I am complacent in the discrimination against the creation of Allah. Allah created us differently. Allah said he created us differently so we may know one another. And you're being complacent in the putting down of Allah's creation. Allah made us what we are. I didn't make myself, you didn't make yourself. There's nothing for you to be proud of that you were born in this family or this skin color. You didn't do that, it wasn't your choice. Allah gave you how you are and Allah made you how you are. So anyone who says that so-and-so are less or more due to their physical being, effectively they are criticizing and critiquing Allah's creation. And I'll end it here inshallah. Hopefully you guys have benefited from this reminder. You can say it's a very different reminder than before. And I really hope that Muslims can make active, active um, steps towards stamping out racism and to stop the madness. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.